Okay, so we know where we want our type to go. We basically know the space we want the type to take up. So now we're on defont.com to find something that will work with it. So this is under themes. Instead of just looking at the newest ones, you have lots of different themes, fancy themes, basic ones, script ones, holidays. Dingbats would be symbols rather than letter forms. And let's try old school. And I have my type in here, at least part of it, showing 25 per page. And these just all look so typical. And I want it to be maybe a little bit thinner, a little bit more elegant than what I'm seeing. I basically want something like this, but kind of curved rather than blocky. So let's, let's see, maybe retro. I'm a big fan of retro. Yeah, these are looking better. This is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. This is beautiful. So you'll kind of find what works. And then, of course, we're going to modify it. This is actually quite nice and clear. So when you find a typeface that you think might have some potential, then you click on Download. And note when you download what the, the stipulations are on it, right? It will say Shareware, or it will say Free for Personal Use, or it will say 100% Free but you are trusting that the author that donated it to Defont actually has the rights to it. But everything on Defont is free for your personal and student use. It's just when you use it for commercial jobs, that becomes a little scarier. So I clicked on download. It's gonna to go to my downloads folder here on my Mac. It's gonna come in as a zip file. I wanna take that zip file and put it right into my assignment folder. So I keep that zip file with my assignment. So I'll show you what that looks like. Here we have downloads. This is called the Mortina. When I'm doing a lot of design, sometimes I'm going to move some of this, these assets into talk about that later. Some risograph color backgrounds. Sometimes I'll do screen grabs of different options here. So when I'm downloading a lot, I know what they are. So I'm going to download three to play with. This one, Market Deco, is pretty nice. And it might give you hints for more to look at. So if I want an Art Deco style, this one, Riesling, oh, that's gorgeous. I really like how that's designed. It's just not readable enough for my purposes. And then let's see, one more. And a lot of the times poster designs will have more than, more than one, more than two, sometimes more than four <laughs> different typefaces that it uses. So in the one I designed before, it's using a lot of different typefaces, lowercase, uppercase, you know, to make the title of the coloring book. Okay, I've downloaded them. I like using Chrome because it shows me what I've downloaded. Now I need to move them into my folder. And then I'll show you how you put them onto your computer. Up my downloads, move them in. There we go. Okay, so I've got three. I want you all to play with at least three 
just so you can practice this. You double click to unzip it. It makes it into a folder. Keep the zip file there so you can always unzip it to get uncorrupted type files. So I have all three now. Sometimes they'll unzip just as the type file, as an OTF or a TTF file. When it does that, you just click on the file. You just double click on it. It will open up on a Mac what's called the font book, and then you'll install it. On a PC, it will open up the, the type installation program there. Even though these are typefaces, not fonts, you know. But anyway, I'll let it go. And any good graphic designer has hundreds and hundreds of typefaces in their book. You know, just for Mission Impossible for the campaign I did for the campus's pedagogy conference, Mission Possible, I downloaded quite a few to modify for my use. Right. But I want to remember what the name is. So Market Deco, that was one. Let's then when they open up into a folder, you need to open the folder. Sometimes the folder will give you really nice examples of how it can be used. I love this. This is generous and beautiful. Showing you how this typeface might be used. But the file that really matters is either the TTF or the OTF. And then sometimes they will have a rights image, right? So this says free for personal use, no commercial use allowed. If you want to purchase a commercial license, then it shows you where you can do that, right? Because these are type designers that make their living this way. But I'm going to double click on this. It will install it. Notice that this comes with all the uppercase letter forms. It doesn't come with any lowercase and it doesn't come with any symbols or numbers but that suits my purposes just fine. I click on install, I click. If there's a minor problem, go ahead and proceed. I've never, I've never had, like these are simple files. So as long as they're OTFs or TTFs, I've never had it cause a problem with the system. It just might be slightly outdated. And then the last one, the, the American captain, don't love the name, so I guess it's inspired by Captain America, probably the, the movie title. And then they have a TTF and an OTF. On a Mac, it doesn't matter which one you use. This does come with numbers, but it doesn't come with lowercase. Remember, if you want to check if it has lowercase and you need that, you just type it in your preview. So unfortunately, I was downloading the typefaces. And whenever I type, the, the screen recorder stops and I start forgot to restart it. But just to summarize what I was doing, let's see. I opened up the typefaces. And you want to find the TTF or the OTF file. You double click on that. And it will open up in the font book. And then you install it. And then it's there for your use. And it's going to be there for your use in all programs, right? Word processing programs and Illustrator and Photoshop. First, we'll just play with type tools in Photoshop really quickly because they're a little bit easier to understand. I probably, let's see. Yeah, here we go. I'll keep this open just so I remember the, the names of the typefaces I downloaded. And let's, let's take the one... I kind of like the best, this Market Deco one. So what do I do? I click on the T in Tools. This will be the same for Illustrator. I'm going to use the regular horizontal type tool. I'm going to make a little text box, just like you would in Google Slides or in PowerPoint. Up here, you'll have your options. I'm going to make it nice and large. I can type in like maybe 150 as a point size, because these are vectors. Hit Return. And then I'm just going to type in Northeast. The color of the type is white, so it's not showing up. So I need to select it all just like I would in a word processor. And I can click the color and just make it black. And it shows me. So I have Northeast. 
Now, this was the last typeface that I used within Photoshop. Because just like, strange, the T doesn't have a regular T. <laughs> it's called phosphate. This is the inline font variation of phosphate. It also comes with a solid variation. So this is why there's a difference between typefaces and fonts. Typefaces are the designs you use. Fonts are the variations on that design. And a lot of typefaces don't have any fonts, don't have any bold or any outline example. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to change it to, what did I say, Market Deco. So I selected it and then chose the typeface of Market Deco. Oh, that's why it's giving me this. It's going to give you the dash if you've gone beyond your, your size. <laughs> and then I have white type after that. So this can get confusing. So let me show that again. I'm going to erase that layer. Use the type tool. Just click. You don't even need to draw a box. It will give you what's called Latin text double click on the T, just like you would choose colors for a shape tool, and you'll get the options, and you can type in new content. Then you can select that content, and you can choose the, the typeface you want, and you choose the color, the typeface size, and then I've got that, right? And then I can use a command T just to get a sense of how these letters might work within my blocking. And I can tilt it. I can even use, I wanted to show you this because it's very helpful in Photoshop just to kind of mock this up. There's an arc tool, which is a lot easier to do in Photoshop than it is in Illustrator. Just click on that arc tool. And you get a little transform box that allows you to angle and curve your lettering. Also, you can play with the spacing between the letters here. If you really want to spend some time, you just select them all by double clicking on the T. And then you hold down Option. Well, let's, I'll just do it between the, the T and the H. You hold down Option and you press your arrow keys. And that will play with the kerning, the spacing between the letters. So there's so many things you can do. That works pretty well. Now I'm going to take that same layer, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to try one of my other typefaces. Let's move it out of the way here. Maybe I'm going to create some more canvas size for me going to grow it higher just so I can test these out. Okay, so this one, now I'm going to double click and I'm going to choose Mortina. The only uh, font variation it allows is the one it came with, right? And that's what Mortina looks like. And if I want to play with the kerning and the spacing, I can by holding down Option and selecting the whole thing or selecting individual letters. I can also, of course, play with varying the size of the individual letters just by playing with the, the scale, right? Okay, and then one more time, I'm going to duplicate it, move it up and try my the third one I downloaded, which is American Captain. I'm gonna select it all. This seems to stop the recording when I do it. So instead of typing in American Captain, I'm just gonna find it in the list. See what font variations, it doesn't have any. 